the government has subsidized all of the supply side sources, the fossil fuels as well as nuclear. Uh, nuclear is, uh, you know, uh, I think stands out for its hypocrisy more than the others because uh, the nuclear people are now coming along and saying, hey, we've got the answer to global warming and uh, all we want is a market-oriented energy policy. This is what the Bush administration is saying. And yet, if you know anything about the subject, you know that Wall Street has rated nuclear power too risky to use. You can't get it insured. And the government is providing uh, free insurance. Uh, you know, it's subsidizing it, uh, the, the, the technology in the most fundamental way. Uh, it, it couldn't be used if, if you didn't have the Price-Anderson Act. So how can anybody uh, with an IQ of over 100 and a straight face say that nuclear power uh, is, is something to be used in a market-oriented energy policy. I've had the misfortune of probably having had as much experience with nuclear power as, as anyone else since I uh, came to the Tennessee Valley Authority and uh, they had 14 large reactors uh, under construction and we uh, shut eight of them down and then I came here to SMUD and uh, found that another reactor had just been shut down. Uh, I, I think that as the years have uh, gone on, uh, the analysis of the nuclear technology becomes clearer and clearer. Uh, it's been this country's uh, most expensive technological failure thus far. I think the, the bottom line is that this technology was advertised as too cheap to meter and it's turned out to be too expensive to use. Uh, in, other, in, order, in order to make it safe enough, it becomes uneconomical. The visit to Chernobyl in April kind of distilled a lot of things that were floating around in, in my mind. You know, uh, the safety issue tends to be uh, sloughed off and brushed aside. And then you uh, go over and see that there's, there's millions of people whose lives are essentially wiped out and uh, an area the size of Northern California is contaminated uh, forever, or at least for thousands of years, and uh, uh, the enormity of the accident uh, hits you. Uh, where you got hundreds of thousands of people contaminated. Uh, you know, we can keep the lights on without running that kind of risk. I mean, you're, you're talking about the gene pool of the world. Uh, why do you want to pursue something that is inherently uh, uh, capable of, of providing a nuclear hell for large parts of this world. It just doesn't make sense except that there's all this money. The opposition uh, grew and grew and grew and it was because uh, the people uh, didn't play a role or weren't even consulted or had no part in the development. It, it's, and one of the problems with nuclear power is it's inherently a centralized uh, uh, technology that requires a, a very strong central government. Uh, it requires a very large police force. And uh, of course, uh, the solar option, and people should realize this, they keep sloughing away at solar power, but this is very important. The solar option is a complete alternative to the fossil fuels. And the reason I say that is, I know there's not much sun in North Dakota or Maine, but solar power can take ordinary water and break it into hydrogen and oxygen. And the hydrogen can be uh, moved in a pipeline just like natural gas is moved in a pipeline. So we can have a solar hydrogen energy economy that completely satisfies all of our energy needs. And hydrogen, when it's burned, uh, as a byproduct, you know, water. Uh, so there's no pollution. And it can be used in fuel cells, ideally, and the fuel cells may power cars. So the technology for a uh, cleaner uh, and uh, more economical uh, energy economy is there.